Hey there, internet users. You know what I like? Pokemon. Who among us doesn't love running around a happy, cheery world filled with lovable and colorful creatures that you can enslave? You know what I don't like, though? When said fictional universe has glaring flaws in its own logic. I mean, I can believe in a society that allows small children to freely control the power of literal gods and deities, but the moment you try and tell me that I can fly halfway across the world on an unconscious pigeon, you've lost all sense of realism to me. I mean, really, come on now. Today I want to talk about some things in the Pokémon universe that have severely bothered me since I was a child, all the way up to my adulthood. Here are five things in the Pokémon universe that make absolutely no sense. Okay, okay, you all saw the thumbnail, so let's get this one done and out of the way first. Yes, it is indeed true. The king and queen of the original 151 are unable to breed with each other. Since the introduction of the breeding mechanic to the Pokémon games, this has been the case all the way up to the current generations with seemingly no good reason for it. To be clear here, the real problem lies with Nidoqueen. You see, Nidoking is actually able to breed with other Pokémon, but its female counterpart is unable to breed, period. For some unexplained reason, out of Nidoqueen's entire evolutionary line, only the original Nidoran female is able to breed, being able to lay eggs that can produce either another female Nidoran or a male Nidoran, aka the first Pokémon in Nidoking's evolutionary line. Out of all the hundreds of species of Pokémon throughout all of the games and generations, this specific case of losing your ability to breed is unique only to the Nidoqueen family. And what's more, to add to the confusion, the mechanic of breeding Pokémon was added in the generation after Nidoking and Nidoqueen debuted. In fact, until breeding was introduced, these two evolutionary lines were the only ones that clearly had stated genders within the games. This meant that at some point during development of the Generation 2 games, someone had to say, Hey, you know the original female Pokémon? Let's make it so that after it evolves, it can no longer mate with anything. This whole situation baffles me, and it just doesn't make any sense at all. And then the anime has it make even less sense by showing this baby Nidoqueen in one of the movies. How does that even work? Did you even pay attention to your source material? But do you want to know what the weirdest part of this whole thing is? Like I just mentioned, Nidoqueen's first form, the female Nidoran, is still able to breed. Which means that while Nidoking may not be able to breed with the fully grown Nidoqueen, it is perfectly capable of producing an egg with the younger Nidoran. Yeah, I look forward to seeing your comments on that one. Imagine, if you will, that you are out on a pleasant walk through the woods. All of a sudden, you notice in your path a small tree. Would you A. Walk around it B. Walk around it C. Turn back and find a way to cut it down because there is absolutely no way to continue moving forward until this tree is completely destroyed. If you answered anything but C, then congratulations. You're not a complete idiot. The residents of the Pokémon universe, on the other hand, are. Okay, now I understand that in video games, there has to be quote-unquote roadblocks in several areas to prevent the player from progressing until they've collected certain items or witnessed specific story-related events. But really? A small tree blocks the path? That was the best thing you could come up with? And don't try to tell me that the 3DS games explain this by saying that the tree has thorns on it. Anyone with a brain can see you can still just walk around them. You know what? Forget the small tree. Why can't I just walk around the trees in general? Do the people of the Pokémon world have some sort of phobia of trees or something? Hang on, I need to search this up. Hylophobia, also known as xylophobia, wylophobia, and dendrophobia, is a psychological disorder defined by an irrational fear of wood, forest, or trees. Well, I'll be damned. I shouldn't be joking about this. This is probably a serious issue that has plagued many people's lives. All of which likely started with Charmander. And for crying out loud, Lieutenant Surge, if you're gonna run a gym, then maybe you might want to consider doing something about the impassable trees growing on your property! This next one is one of the most random things ever. As most veteran players are aware, there is a very unique status-inflicting move called Attract. What this move does is infatuate the opposing Pokémon, making it so that they may or may not be able to attack. However, this move only works when used on a Pokémon that is of the opposite gender. Since the move works this way, Pokémon that do not have a gender are, as you might expect, unable to learn the move, which makes sense because they wouldn't be able to do anything with the attack anyway. 
If one of these Pokémon were to use the move by using a copy in attack such as Mimic, the move will simply fail and do nothing for them. A notable exception to this is the Pokémon Mew, as its entire gimmick is that it is able to learn every possible move, but even so, the move will still fail when attempted to be used in battle by it. However, for some absolutely insane and unexplainable reason, the genderless Pokémon Cryogonal is able to learn Attract via TM. Now first off, you might just think that this might have been some kind of oversight. Game Freak is very good at polishing the Pokémon games, but even they can make mistakes. But here's the thing, Cryogonal is a Pokémon that was introduced in Gen 5. If its ability to learn Attract was a mistake, then it naturally would have been fixed in later games, right? Wrong. With the release of the Gen 6 games, Cryogonal maintained its compatibility with the move. I would also just like to point out that another genderless Pokémon, Staryu and its evolution Starmie, were also able to be taught Attract in the Generation 2 games, but this was changed with Generation 3 and onwards. This obviously shows that a genderless Pokémon knowing Attract is a mistake, but then why would they not fix it for this Pokémon? And can I just ask why, out of all the Pokémon, it's just Cryogonal that this applies to? It's just so random. I, I mean, seriously, when was the last time you thought of Cryogonal? Some of you probably even forgot it was a Pokémon until I just brought it up. Just like with other genderless Pokémon, though, the move does absolutely nothing when used by it. Just like the mystery of the unbreedable Nidoqueen, we may never know the mystery behind its unique situation. You know what I think is dumb in Pokémon? Trading. But not for the reason you may think. It's not because several species are required to be traded in order to evolve. Which, by the way, makes it almost impossible to complete the older games nowadays. It's not because you can't change the name of the Pokémon that's traded to you. It's not because that, despite all Pokémon clearly existing in one version, you still have to trade with someone who has the other, because it's impossible to find certain species in yours. No, the biggest thing that I hate about trading Pokémon is the logic behind its process. So the next thing on this list is what I refer to as... Trading Machines. For whatever reason, in the Pokémon world, instead of just exchanging one creature for another, instead, people use these weird machines that you put your Pokémon through a special effects show as it sends it to the person you're trading with, which in the game, in both real life, is literally just a few feet from you. Is this really necessary? I mean, I know it's a lot less exciting than just handing each other a Pokéball, but did you really have to construct a Rube Goldberg machine to overcomplicate the process? God dang Pokémon people and their frickin' Pokémon technology. And the number one thing in Pokémon that makes no sense is... Cubone! Oh boy, where do I begin with this little guy? Like with the last one, the reason I put Cubone here isn't what you might think. Forget all that stuff about Lavender Town. The problems with Cubone actually don't start until the second generation. As you probably might have guessed, what I'm referring to is breeding. You see, like most other non-legendary Pokémon, except Nidoqueen, Cubone is capable of breeding which means you can get a bunch of eggs and hatch yourself some more Cubones. And that is exactly the problem. For those of you that aren't aware, there is something pretty important in the Pokedex about Cubone. Mainly the fact that the skull that it wears on its head is supposed to belong to its dead mother. Baby Cubone problem number one. When a Cubone hatches, where the hell did that skull come from? It has it right on its head as soon as it hatches. Baby Cubone problem number two. Pokémon don't die when you breathe them. How is it wearing its mother's skull when its mother is still clearly alive? Baby Cubone problem number three. There is no limit to how many times you can breed a Pokémon. The same pair of Pokémon can breed as many Cubones as you want. So let's say you hatch a couple dozen Cubones. Because all of them are Cubones, every single one of them will be wearing their mother's skull. Do I even need to explain what the problem with that is? On top of that, what about in Pokémon Mystery Dungeon, where your character is a human that's transformed into a Pokémon? If you're playing as a Cubone, then whose skull am I wearing? Okay, so there is a popular theory among fans that Cubone is in fact an orphan baby that the Pokémon Kangaskhan carried around in its pouch. That Pokémon also happens to be a nightmare when it comes to breeding, because when it hatches, there's both a baby and the full-grown adult in there. Doesn't that just make them twins instead of parent and child? Wait a second. Two Pokémon hatch from the egg, the other hatches with the skull already on it. Oh, I think I just realized where all those skulls are coming from. Seriously, Game Freak, you let these things produce offspring in horrifying ways, but you won't let Nidoqueen? What gives? 
You know, when the old guy at the daycare tells you that he doesn't know where those eggs came from, I think he might just be trying to spare us the disturbing details. Or he's just trying very hard to forget. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching this video. I just want to give a quick quick second here to uh, say thank you all so much for getting me over 500 subscribers. Um, really means a lot to me to see everyone watching and liking my videos. And I also just want to give a quick little apology. Um, this video was supposed to come out like a week ago, but as it turns out, December is a very busy month for people. <laughs> I've got a bunch more stuff planned for the future, so you know, look look forward to that. And if you're into Poke if you're into Pokemon, which you probably are if you're watching this video, you can click on some other videos here and check them out. Um, I got a I got a video where I talk about the jerks of Pokemon. I got another one where I talk about the unused content of Pokemon. Those ones were really popular, really really popular. And I've also on my other channel just started a Nuzlocke playthrough with my brother, so you can check that out if you'd like. We put the Moemon mod on, turns all the sprites into anime girls. Yeah, that's a thing. Anyways, thanks again so much for watching. I gotta... Oh, I've stayed up so late working on this. I need a break. Goodbye, everybody.